Reconciliation of Book and Taxable Income Problem 5. Carrot Corporation has the following. So we have sales revenue of $2 million, cost of goods sold of $1,200,000, which gives us a gross profit of $800,000. Meals and entertainment expense equal $100,000. Bad debt expense equals $30,000. Depreciation expense equals $80,000. Other operating expenses equal $220,000. Contingent loss equals $50,000 to give us income before taxes of $320,000. Federal income tax expense is $80,000 to give us net income of $240,000. All of those numbers are book income on the books of Carrot Corporation. Now, other items include the following. Carrot expense for book purposes, meals of $46,000 and entertainment of $54,000. Assume for taxes, meals are 50% deductible and entertainment is not deductible. The $50,000 contingent loss is from an employee work-related accident suit. It has not yet gone to court. Carrot's books reflect bad debt expense of $30,000 calculated as 1.5% of sales. Actual write-offs were $22,000. Maker's depreciation equals $95,000. Calculate taxable income. All right, so we've got a book to tax reconciliation question. These ones with a lot of information, they take a while to do, but it's important that you go through the problems in order. So I've gone through a few problems now, some really short problems. I've gone through another one that's really long like this. Make sure you go through those book to tax reconciliation problems first. So the idea here is that we're given book income. We've got all these items for Carrot Corporation book income as well as additional information. Our goal is to get the end taxable income item. Now, if you're taking my class, I have a table for you to complete for this problem. So what you're going to have is you basically are going to need to fill out the book tax difference column as well. So there's going to be a column in the middle. And then what that does is it goes from book income, book to tax differences in the middle, which we're going to do, go through all this information, these adjustments, and then we have taxable income. Okay. So basically what you do here is you go, we're going to go through the information presented to us and we're going to adjust based on the information that we have. We also might need to adjust for certain things based on what it is. For example, the federal income tax expense, as you've seen in the previous videos, you don't ever get that deduction for federal taxable income. So that's going to have to be added back always. So that's an example of where you add that back. Okay. Some of these items are just subtraction, you know, those types of things. So we'll go through each of these other items and then we'll adjust the different items will bring over the other items and then we'll we'll just conclude the problem getting our taxable income but the idea is that in my class you should fill out this table now what exactly is this as i mentioned in the previous problems for the different business entities c corporations s corporations partnerships on your tax return whether it's an 1120 a 1065 1120 s regardless what kind of tax return it is there is schedules where you have to show your reconciliation of book to taxable income. It's required by, by law. Okay. It's required. So the idea here is that you're showing these adjustments because that way it shows how you get from your book income to your taxable income. It shows how exactly you did that, where, where the adjustments are coming in. And the idea here is that there are differences in the rules, differences in the law with respect to the rules. So certain things like meals and entertainment or depreciation or municipal bond interest have different rules in the tax law than they do in book income, which is the gap, generally accepted accounting principles. All right, so let's go ahead and start by going through the other items. So first thing we're told is that carrot expensed for book purposes, meals of $46,000 and entertainment of $54,000, which if you add those two numbers together, that's 100,000. That's where we get that $100,000 of meals and entertainment expense. And by the way, when we complete an item, another item, I'm going to put a little check mark next to it. So we know we've finished it. Okay. So, or I'll just put a line, either one. That's what I use in these. I usually use a line or I do a check mark. This one I'll do a check mark because now everything is lined up. So, that's where the $100,000 of book meals and entertainment comes from. We're told that. Now, for tax purposes, the rules for meals and entertainment, it's changed over time. So I actually tell you here that for tax purposes, we're allowed to deduct 50% of meals, but none of the entertainment. So the idea here is that we're going to calculate this. And I'll do it on the left side here over because we, we have some space. So the idea is that um, meals, put an M for meals. Actually, sorry, wrong, wrong, uh, wrong line. So you got so much stuff. 
So M for meals and E for entertainment. For tax purposes, no, nothing for entertainment, right? You, you can't get anything. For meals, we can do 50% of $46,000. So 46,000 times 0.5 and then plus zero. Now, the idea here is that the amount that we're allowed to take, that's the amount that should be um, deducted for taxable income purposes. So that means that this calculation on the left side is actually what we can take. So 46,000 times 0.5, that's going to equal $23,000. So that's actually the amount that we're allowed to take on, for tax purposes. So I'll go ahead and put $23,000. So you're saying, why did we, why are we doing that column? Why aren't we doing the book to tax differences? Well, we have to do that as well. There's really what I'm trying to say is there's two ways to get these two different columns. You can do like this calculation like this, or you can calculate what shouldn't be deducted and then put it book tax difference and then get the adjustment. So the idea here is the $100,000 of meals and entertainment expense, if we're only allowed 23, that means we have to add, right? So this line is a arithmetic problem. 100,000, negative 100,000 plus what number equals negative 23,000? Well, that's gonna be positive $77,000. And let's, let's check our work just to make sure. Because we're saying, okay, 23,000 can actually be taken, which is half of the meals. Well, we can't take any of the entertainment, which is 54,000, plus we can't take half of the meals, which is 23. 54,000 plus 23,000 is 77,000. So that makes sense. We can't take any of that. So we are done with the meals and entertainment. Let's go ahead and put a check mark there. Okay, the next is the $50,000 contingent loss. It's from a former, um, I'm sorry, it's from an employee. It's a work related accident and it's, it hasn't yet gone to court. Well, the idea here is that for federal income tax purposes, contingent liabilities are, are, are reported separately or reported differently than book purposes. Tax first book, there's differences. When you report something for tax purposes is likely different from book. So here we look at the line and look, contingent loss, $50,000. So we did have to report it, but it hasn't even gone to court yet. So this is something where whether you're the account, you're, you're using the cash method, the accrual method, it hasn't accrued for tax purposes. So this needs to be added back because the idea here is that it should not be deducted. There is no loss yet for tax purposes. The idea is that the accounting, rec the accounting rules are much more liberal to get a deduction. Because remember, for taxable income, you are trying to reduce your income as much as possible because you want to pay as little as tax. So the idea here is that you want it, you want this to be a deduction, but the tax law doesn't allow as, as generous as a deduction as or as reduction for book purposes. And the idea is because book, it's more conservative. Conservatism is the name of the game. The idea there is that if something is um, not as you know, not as likely to happen. We still, still might have to report it, but for tax purposes, that's not the case. It has to be pretty much certain. So that means our contingent loss needs to go away. The only way to get that is basically to add it back. So we add back the $50,000 because it's negative 50,000 plus what number equals zero. It's positive $50,000. So we finish that one. Okay. So now we're doing the bad debt and bad debt usually gives students that most difficult of all of them. The best way to think about it in my mind is always think about it as um, adding back the the uh, whatever methods used for financial accounting purposes to get the book um, to get the actual write-offs. So we remember that for financial accounting gap, we use the allowance method, the re the reserve method. Okay, and here you're told that bad debt expense for the year was thirty thousand dollars, and it was basically calculated as an estimate one point five percent of sales. So the sales were two million dollars. You see that. Um, two, 2 million times 1.5% is 30,000. That's where the $30,000 of bad debt expense, that's where it comes from. Actual write-offs were $22,000. So financial accounting uses the estimate method or the reserve method or the allowance method, but tax uses the direct write-off method. It says the amount actually written off during the year, that's actually what you can deduct. So this one, we're going to take the $22,000 number and we're going to use that over here on the right side, 22,000. So again, the question is th negative 30,000 plus or minus what number gives us negative 22,000? And that's going to be a positive $8,000. So we'd have to adjust by $8,000 like that. Okay. By the way, if there's, if these numbers in the middle are without brackets, that means it's a positive. If they have negatives, they're, they're, they're a negative number. So we're done with that one. So that one's not bad as well. That 
see, this actually makes it even, even easier for you to understand the way I present it here compared to maybe the previous problem. The idea is I'm showing you in different ways because students learn differently. Okay, now we've got depreciation. Depreciation is another one that's challenging for students. So we're told the bottom right here, maker's appreciation, which is tax appreciation, right, is $95,000. So we go to the depreciation line, we took 80,000. So now you kind of got the hang. That means that tax appreciation for the year should be 95,000. We put 95,000 here. See how we're doing this now? So again, we ask 80,000 or negative 8,000 plus or minus what number gives us negative 95,000. Well, that's gonna be negative $15,000. Now, as I mentioned in the previous videos, a lot of these, these um, differences, book to tax differences are temporary. Some of them are permanent, like the meals and entertainment, others are temporary. The best example of a temporary difference is gonna be the depreciation. The idea is that for book purposes, we almost always use straight line, and that's why we have a difference from the makers or the, for a lot of the assets, we use double decline balance. So the idea is you're not gonna have the same numbers each year, but over time it will equal the same amount for the different assets for each respective asset. So that's how we do this. So we just finish, finish that one. Now, if you look at all the other items, okay, other operating expenses, we don't really know what those are, so we can't really do anything with that. Um, sales revenue and cost of goods sold, no adjustments there. When it comes to income items or revenue items, there's not really a lot that we adjust for. It's usually the deductions, the expenses. There is that old municipal bond rule and life insurance, those rules that I've talked about before in some of the other examples before this one. So think about those, but that's not here in this, in this situation. But what about federal income tax expense? That's another expense on here. Well, remember the rule is for financial accounting, you can deduct the $80,000, but you cannot take the deduction for taxable income. It's going to be zero. So that means we have to take negative 8,000 plus or minus what number equals zero. It's going to, again, just like the $50,000 number, be the whole amount, but a positive. Okay. So those are all the adjustments we've finished. We've gone through everything, all the additional information. We've now got everything. We bring everything over. Sales revenue, there's no difference. So it's just going to be zero difference, $2 million. $2 million of taxable income. Cost of goods sold, there's no change there. So zero for the book tax difference. So that's going to be negative $1,200,000 to give us gross profit, no change of $800,000. Then we've got all our, so zero for the gross profit line there. Other operating expenses, no change there. So that's going to be negative $220,000. And that's going to bring down the amount, which is going to be um, income before taxes. The change, if we calculate that, is going to be a positive $120,000. One hundred twenty thousand, and then this is going to be three hundred twenty thousand plus one hundred twenty thousand is going to equal four hundred forty thousand dollars. And then we have our last line, that in, last line, that income. So again, you can subtract one hundred twenty minus eight thousand net income. So that's going to be an increase of. Um, I'm sorry, I said a subtraction, but remember, really, what this is is this line in the middle is going to be positives and negatives. Yes, I have the, neg the, the subtraction numbers on the left there, but that's just to show you that we normally subtract these items to get the items above. If you, if you want to think of it as um, me erasing, I'll erase these items to help you better understand. Do that like that. That may make more sense. It's just positives and negatives is more what we're using, okay? So that means the number in the middle, book tax difference for net income, 120,000 plus 80,000 is an increase of $200,000. And that brings our taxable income up to 440,000. And that is our chart. And we've gone through everything. So this is another way to look at kind of what we did in the previous problem. And that one, I kind of showed you how to just do the adjustment, how to get the taxable income item, kind of like the shortcut. But sometimes students like to see the shortcut. They want to see the full approach. And looking at it this way might help you understand because the idea is that what we did was we kind of made the adjustment. We kind of focused on the differences, the differences when we did the previous problem, um, problem four. In this one, you're seeing what it should look like on the taxable income column, starting with the sales revenue, comparing it to book income and seeing how it changes. And then kind of the middle is kind of, I'm, I'm kind of backing that out. So it's a different way to look at this. All right. So with that, make sure you go through all these problems together. Very helpful to help you understand the big picture here and what's going on.